Welcome to part two of Reburline Savage Impulse. Uh, if you saw part one, you'll know that I ran into some problems trying to set the headspace, uh, specifically on my new custom barrels, the, uh, the threads on the tenon threads do not run far enough up the shaft for me to headspace it properly. Even with my barrel nut all the way on, where I ran out of threads, uh, I was still about 20,000, 20 some thousandths over go gauge. Whereas ideally you'd want to be two, maybe three thousandths, depending on who you ask. So, um, had a few different ideas, but what I decided to go with is I got this threading die, and this is one and one sixteenths by 20, 20 threads per inch. And I also got this die handle for it to go in. And I got all this from Machine Shop Discount Supply, which I don't have any affiliation with them. This is actually the first stuff I've ever bought from them. It's just that's where I could find the, the right size die, die handle. And um, it all came pretty quickly. It was, you know, maybe 60 some bucks, I think. So the idea is I'm going to use that to add some more threads to the shaft of this barrel. And I've actually, um, I've actually already done this once. So I had two barrels. Um, I ran into a number of problems with the, uh, with the first one. So that was kind of a learning experience. Well, I shouldn't say a number of problems. The main thing was that I couldn't, I had a lot of trouble keeping the barrel from spinning as I was trying to thread it. So, um, as you should know by now, I'm not a gunsmith or a machinist. Don't have a lot of, you know, specialized fancy tools. So that's why I'm doing it with a hand eye. And you can see my barrel vise here is um, state of the art. You know, it's a wood block. I cut it in half. Or actually, I drilled a hole through it first. Cut it in half. And um, I'm using that with a back up here. Sorry. The, just a bench vise to pinch that together. Well, I was having problems getting the barrel to not spin because this thing is pretty slippery. And what I ended up doing is first I roughed up the edges of the barrel or of, of the my homemade vi barrel vise there um, with this guy. And then I used some DIY rosin. This is brown sugar, which... Some people on the internet said that that would work in place of, of rosin, so I thought I'd give it a try. I just kind of smeared that on the inside edges of the wood block. And then I pinched it all together pretty much as hard as I could, or as tight as I could get that vise to go. And that did act, end up working. So, um, one other thing that I had to figure out along the way is how do I know how many threads or how much more length of threads I'm adding because I really only want to add enough so that I can headspace it properly. If I add too many, if I thread it down too, too far down the shaft, then when I get it headspaced properly, I'm going to have threads sticking out the other side of this barrel knot, which isn't the end of the world, but it's not ideal. So, what I figured out, and I'm sure people smarter than me would have better ideas, but I just put this, um, I just put this little level on top and I threaded, this is the barrel knot here, I threaded it all the way on until I ran out of threads and then I made a little mark over here on this side, which you can't see, but there's a mark there. That way I know that I'm measuring from the same spot each time. I'm just going to take my calipers here and I'm going to measure the distance between the two. And I'm getting oh, about 1.212. So 
1.212 and I want to add about I don't know 25 thousands so when I'm done with this I should have a measurement of 1.237 I was just writing that down quick. So when I get the barrel nut, when I add some more threads, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll get this barrel nut as far as it'll go. Put this on top. I'll measure this distance between in the same exact spot right here. Because I have a mark there. And that's how I'm going to keep track of that. So without further ado, let's see if we can do this. Hopefully my barrel vise holds. I'm just going to take the rail nut off and I'm going to use some uh, thread cutting fluid. Put some of that on there. And I'm going to put the top or the, I'm going to put the vise. Wow. I'm going to put the die on here by hand. I'm just going to get it started. It's easier said than done. There we go. I'm just going to thread it on a ways by hand. And I've already, I've already done kind of dry runs with this thing to make sure that it is the right size and it's not going to mess up the threads that I have on there already. I'm just going to put my die handle on. I'm going to run the little set screw into the index hole and I'm going to spin this baby on. And it's kind of hard to know um, how much or how many threads you're adding when you uh, run this handle around. Here I'm still on the existing threads. We'll see. I get to a spot where you know, my vice wants to move a little bit. Here I'm at a spot where, there it is, come to a dead stop. So I'm out. I'm out of threads there. This is where I'm going to start cutting new ones. Just clean that up a little bit because I want to, I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to make a mark here. Where I start, which is lined up with this handle. That way I know as I move this handle around, I can see, okay, I'm at a quarter turn, that's a half turn. Um, and that way I can tell how far I'm going. And we're starting to cut threads now. I've got both my hands on here, and it's it's pretty, it's got some pretty good resistance. I'm just going to go a little ways and then I'm going to back off. I'm going to clean that up and go a little bit further. And just kind of keep going back and forth like that. And I can see now my handle, I start my handle started. I guess you can't see that. My handle started here. Now it's over here, so that's about a quarter turn. I'm going to do a half turn and see what that gets me. So again, I'm just going a little bit, maybe, I don't know, a quarter inch or so at a time, and then I just back it off to clean that thread up. And here we go. I'm at, I'm at a half, half a turn. So this handle... I added threads from this handle being in this position all the way over to the opposite position. And what I'm going to do, because I don't know of any better way of doing this, is so I'm just going to run the die off and I'm going to check. Little update here. I'm just checking it. See if I got enough threads on there yet. Uh, I got the go gauge inside the barrel. I'm threading the um, action down until it touches. So that is like absolute minimum headspace there. 
is touching on the go gauge. And I'm just going to measure the distance. It's going to be a rough measurement, obviously, but I'm just going to measure the distance between the barrel nut because this barrel nut is run all the way down as far as I can. Um, and I got, I got about 215, which is definitely better than it was. But here's my recoil lug. The recoil lug still needs to go in there. And my recoil lug is 220. So not quite there. I need about five, well, at the very least five thousands. Um, probably going to add another 10 or 15 just to be safe. Probably another quarter to half turn of my die down this thing. But um, I'm going to go do that and see what that gets me. Okay, got my die back on here. Um, I got thread cutting fluid in there. And I got her all the way down to the bottom here where I ran out of threads. And I got my position again marked on the barrel versus my handle. So this handle, I'm just gonna run a little bit further. And again, I'm only running this maybe a quarter inch at a time. My vise is also moving, which is not ideal, but it's okay just running it back and forth I cut a little bit of thread and then I clear it out smooth it out and there we go there's another half turn so I ended up putting a full turn on this one. I'm just going to run it back and forth a few more times. Make sure that thread is cut right. Clear it out. I'm just I'm going to spin this off of here and I'm going to check it again. Okay, I'm checking again. So I got my go gauge. I got my barrel nut all the way down until I ran out of threads. Again, just by hand. Uh, I got my receiver spun on here. I'm going to put my go gauge in. Lock the receiver down into, into battery. And I'm just going to spin the receiver down until it touches. So there we go. It's touching on the go gauge. That's like absolute minimum headspace. And I'm just going to measure now this space between the barrel nut and the receiver again. And I got, hold on here. I got 237. And what was my recoil lug again? 219, 220. Somewhere in there. So now I finally have enough space where I can get this recoil lug between the receiver and the barrel nut. Still have a little bit of extra space to set um, headspace out a couple thousands from the go gauge. And I should be good to go. So that'll be part three in this series um, coming up next where we'll do the actual head spacing of this barrel onto this receiver. And uh, we'll see how that goes.